Hello and welcome everyone. So I'll be explaining um, a recent uh, Div 3 round, problem D, named same difference, dif same differences. I'm super excited to explain this problem to you guys. Um, I had so much fun so problem this problem, particularly this problem, problem D. So you will enjoy this solution very much, I hope. Okay, so what the problem statement uh, actually derives is that you're going to be given an array, A, consisting of n integers. What you have to do, count the number of pairs, count the number of indices, i, j, from that array, okay, where i will be less than j. Uh, that's basically, if this is an array, then if this is i, and for the, uh, so basically just uh, all the possible sub-arrays, okay. Uh, where i would be less than of j i hope you get that um, and now you have to find out what are the number of pair of indices where i is less than j which means defining some two in, uh, indices where i is less than j and also we need to uh, like verify a condition which is a j minus a i which means the jth element of the array a minus the ith element of the array a equal to j minus i. Now, also one thing to notice, test case is up to 10 to the power 4. Although they have said that, yes, it is guaranteed that the sum of n over all the test cases does not exit 2 into 10 to the power 5, which means per test case, I can assure that, okay, I've got 10 to the power 5, 2 into 10 to the power 5 element. Now, n is up to quite big, 2 into 10 to the power 5. 10 to the power 5, right? So you might think that, how am I supposed to do that? I've got two different indices, and I have to check this condition, which is aj minus ai equal to j minus i, which are very much two different indices. How am I going to manipulate and solve this problem as the end is so big? Well, this, uh, what you have to do is you have to think smartly here you can what you can do is okay i'm giving a given a condition to very verify right now if you closely look at it this is actually an equation you could define and as they have given an equation to verify we could manipulate this equation we have the right to do that now how can we manipulate this equation such that we could do it in big of n um, fashion in order uh, rather than going for the n square which is obviously going to give us TLE which is thinking this equation uh, on the direction of a single indices how is that possible now look I and J are different right so if I just manipulate this equation and write something as this which is if AJ minus j equal to a i minus i obviously i can i can say that absolutely i have a right to manipulate this equation to that they have given us to verify now how is this equation going to help us just imagine here on the two sides of this equation i've got same dependency indices whereas on the previous or the primary uh, equation that they have given where on the left side or left hand side I had two different indices values but here I have same indices values this is definitely gonna help us how is this because I know my j a j value is actually uh, what I only have to do is just what um, try to find out the subtraction of uh, of some indexes value with that index not any other index that index itself and if i could somehow verify that okay this value is equal to some other value which is basically going to give us then i know that it is possible to do that so i won't have to go for all the sub arrays instead i could manipulate the uh, equation and make each and every side is dependent on a single indices like this like the le left hand side is like what uh, depended on the jth index aj minus j i have a uh, like fluency here uh, uh, which i can do that i hope you get that now 
the question is uh, and now the problem just boiled down and boiled down to a very easy conclusion here we basically have to find when we take the array array's value we're instead of putting those values inside the array what we're going to be doing we're going to be inserting like this ai equal to ai minus i obviously because we have to check this condition so like uh, when we're going to be taking these values i'm ta i'm talking about this like sin, sin of ai when we're going to be taking it we're not just going to be inserting this instead we could do something like that in order to verify the equation how like that ai minus i the ith index and i would be of course it would be one indexing okay i hope you get that here now how is this going to help us just remember i have boiled down to like depended on one index as on each of the sides and what it actually is going to give us is that some of the values if you see when you do this operation you would see that the final conclusion a null array would give some value via values equal now when you see that those some values equal what do they actually refer they do actually refer to this condition nothing but this condition because by allowing this you are what you are allowing that uh, or you have uh, you have verified that okay there are some uh, indexes values that meet these conditions uh, to to explain more uh, let's take one example here okay is it recording yeah okay now okay let's take this example one six three four five six right now let's take it look at it one six three four five six now what I basically have to do I know this is my this is my index one two three four and then five and then six now remember what I said when I take the value one I'm not inserting value one inside my arrays value on that particular index instead what I'm just inserting is a i minus i so here it will be zero here it will be six minus two would be four here it would be uh, zero it would be zero zero and also zero okay now what is this array actually does mean that if you look closely look at it some of the values get equal there um, uh, by doing that I'm actually making a separate values groups there could be some groups like that like some values could be equal and then some other values could be equal so I'm just making a group just by doing uh, the simple operations which I did uh, by manipulating the condition that they have given that uh, exactly now the con uh, now you have found out which are the indexes that are actually uh, fulfilling the condition now as a result what you have to do for each and every group of these numbers like here we have got only two groups which is a group of members of only four and a, another group of members of only zero okay so what are the zero groups so uh, so I've got one group of member one two three five five member consist I've got total two groups here one group consisting of five members and the other groups consisting of four member uh, like one members now also one thing to notice is that one thing to do, one thing to know if you don't know it is that uh, let's say I've got n values and if I want to calculate how many sub arrays that I can create uh, where i is less than of j okay uh, let's say I have a value mm, I, I'm given an array a of consisting of length n and and I, and I want to I want to find out what are the number of sub arrays that I can create like not sub arrays what are the number of pairs actually where i is less than j and if you could figure out that you you would notice that there are actually n times n minus 1 divided by 2 sub arrays available uh, sorry not sub arrays pairs available where i is less than of j less than of j okay okay where i is less than of j okay i hope you get that um, uh, this is actually the basic uh, mathematics you will you will just uh, if you do work on uh, 
try to find out all the possible pairs you will see that the number sums up always uh, for n values it always sums up n times n minus 1 by 2 so basically what we have to do after the conclusional array what we have to do we have to add the results by specific groups and for each and every group the result would be the member of that group let's say the member of that group is equal to is assigned to a variable n then the the total number of pairs that are going to be considered that we are going to be considering is n times n minus 1 divided by 2 now these n times n minus 1 divided by 2 we're going to add it for each and every group we're going to add it now for this case now I've got one group of five member num uh, member number five so I could say that five times five minus one divided by two what would that give me is five times two ten okay ten members and uh, I like ten possible pairs and for the second group w w which consists of only one members uh, it's gonna be one times one minus one divided by two it's obvious because there won't be any any kind of group the values itself is on a one not uh, greater than one so uh, finally the answer would be 10 as you can see the answer is 10 similarly each and every problem is like something like that so the key aspect and the tricky part was the uh, conditional part you had to manipulate the conditional period in a such in such manner where you could like loop through the array you don't need to uh, do any n square uh, solutions because that would also give uh, give us TLE you don't need to do that I instead we could manipulate the conditions and finally we could uh, draw the answer like this we uh, as we have told you as I've told you uh, now for the for the code part let's let's take a look at it uh, how we did it uh, now yeah this is basically the n plus 1 taking uh, just for the sake of one indexing one indexing array okay that's why the zeroth element a of zeroth element uh, is quite uh, like uh, quite less value that I have assured it here um, because uh, although we're, we're only focusing on indexing one indexing so we're only focusing on that like like this I is only starting from one okay uh, taking each and every value and calculating this is the tricky part here which is gonna giving uh, which is actually giving us a i minus equal to n okay each and every values of a equal to a minus equal to n and uh, uh, after that we were uh, sorting the array we're going to sort the array because sorting the array actually makes us easier to uh, solve and easier to form the groups and for each and every groups what i did was here basic implementation for each and every groups i'm just creating this um, how many pairs i can form for each and every groups and then add into my result finally answering the uh, like outputting the answer that's all uh, that's basically it so the main part was this to you had to manipulate this and uh, that was the tricky part here so I hope you get that and uh, yeah it was a really fun problem to solve uh, I hope you enjoyed the solutions and yeah till next time goodbye